Our phylum, Periphera, better known as sponges, includes between 5,000 and 15,000 species. On top of that, they, are, they exist for more than 600 million years, which is why they are so simple. They have pores on their body, which are important for their special feeding system. By filtering the water, they clean it and they eat, and they are also home for many animals. They have no nerves or no organs, but scientists are not sure if they have feelings, which is pretty amazing. They can repair damages to their body. Tenophora, more commonly known as comb jellies, the best phylum ever. And here's why. Firstly, they come in so many different shapes and sizes. See, this one's called a Venus girdle. And secondly, all 100 discovered species, that's approximate, can be divided into two different classes, tentaculata and nuda. Those with tentacles and those without. Tentaculata also have coloblasts lo located on their tentacles, which are similar to the nomadicists, so stinging things on jellyfish. Yes, but instead of releasing venom, they release a glue-like substance that helps them capture their prey. Isn't that fancy? One of their main characteristics over both classes is their eight ciliated comb rows. Cilia are a hair-like cell that helps them move through the ocean, and they also recycle the nomadicists from jellyfish. Our phylum is Nigeria, and it is the best phylum. There are over 10,000 different kinds of species in this phylum. And they use special stinging cells called nidocytes to capture their prey. There are only three known types of nidocytes. Nematocysts, they inject venom into their prey. Spiracysts, they use small sticky hairs on the end of a thread to entangle their prey. Cytocytes, they build protective tubes for their owners to live in. And that's why Nigeria are the best phylum. Cladihelminthes are a diverse phylum that range from flatworms to tapeworms. Tapeworms live in animal intestines. You can get a tapeworm from drinking from contaminated streams or eating rotten animal meat. Flatworms have small hairs on the underside of their body which they use to glide over the surface film on the water. They are important for the maintenance of healthy levels of organisms in various pond environments. Because flatworms consume all of these organisms, they control the population and keep the organisms from getting out of hand. Flatworms live in the sea and mildly resemble flattened prosciutto. Phylum mollusca includes snails, slugs, clams, and many others. They have no spine, most are vegetarian, and most mollusks are gastropods and bivalves. Brains of mollusks wind around their esophagus. Octopus, squids, and cuttlefish are one of the most advanced mollusks. They have relatively large brains, complicated behavior, and amazing vision. Our phylum is Annelida. Annelida mostly associates with worms, but there are way more than you think. There are over 17,000 different species of annelids alive today. Annelids have a head region, a trunk made up of metamers and an unsegmented terminal region called the pygidium. Annelids are really neat because they don't even need legs to walk. They have little segments with bristles to help them move across the ground. And that's why Annelida is a cool and important phylum. Today we are going to tell you some fun facts about arthropods. So yeah, arthropods were the first land animals and one of the first phylums ever. Uh, they have segmented bodies. They go through ecchidysis, which is the shedding of their exoskeleton segments to grow new, to grow new ones. They go through metamorphosis, kind of like butterflies, and they comprise 80% of all animals on Earth, meaning they comprise um, the majority of all living life on this planet. Whoa, that's a lot of facts. I know this phylum is the best. Damn right, it's huge. You know it. Okay. Phylum Meconodermata. Maybe you've heard that sea stars, when they lose a limb, will regenerate it. Fairly quickly, actually. Uh, but did you know that sea cucumbers, when they feel threatened, will actually expel their internal organs in self-defense and then regenerate them over a course of several months? Not only that, the 7,000 species of, of econoderms are among the only species that are actually able to push. Most other complex organisms can only move things by contracting muscles, but thanks to the Econoderm's complex um, water vascular system, which acts as a fully functioning hydraulic system, they're actually able to push their tube feet straight out to enable walking, feeding, and they even use their water vascular system for circulating nutrients inside their body.
The chordates phylum contains over 65,000 species, ranging from blue whales to tiny fish smaller than an inch. Although the third largest phyla, it isn't size that matters. The chordates are by far the most diverse of all the phyla. Four characteristics of species in this phylum are they have pharyngeal slits, gills, dorsal nerve, a bundle of nerve cords down the back, brain, lateral muscle, and other organs connected to it a notochord, rod under the nerve cord, and a post-anal tail. There are three subphylums that make up the phylum chordata. One is the tunicates. They are an invertebrate animal, aka an animal lacking a backbone. Second, there are lancelets. They consist of about 32 species and are usually found in shallow, temperate, and tropical seas, often half buried in sand. And last but not least, vertebrates. They represent the majority of the phylum chordata.